So I'm preaching from Ezekiel today, and I'm also mindful that I'm not to make it too long because we've had lots of singing, and um, it's important that we have a, a good, good church service that doesn't go for too long. So during the week, um, I was talking to David about our, um, our heritage and our background, and we realised that we actually had a, a little bit in common. Before I was in the Uniting Church, I was actually an elder in the continuing Presbyterian Church, and so I was brought up as a Presbyterian, um, embedded in Scottish tradition and in Calvinism and the Institute of Religions and all the, uh, the historic documents of the, um, of the Reformed Church and the Presbyterian Church. So I'm going to break away from my um, Methodist background to this morning and actually branch into Presbyterianism for the day and the Presbyterian approach to Pentecost. The theme of my sermon is, Can These Bones Live? And what I propose is that there are actually four things that we need to think about when we need to enrich the Holy Spirit in our community. We need to welcome the Spirit into our hearts. We need to nurture the Spirit in grace. We need to connect with the Spirit and we need to create four things. And from that, we can grow. In my hand here, I have a, a copy of a very old book. It's called The Westminster Confession of Faith. And if you're a good Presbyterian, you would have had to look at this. I'm going to read from it. Actually, I'll read a little bit at the beginning because it's quite, quite amazing when you hear this old chaotic English. It says here, The shorter catechism agreed upon by the assemblies of the divines of Westminster with the assistance of the commissioners from the Church of Scotland as a part of the covenanted uniformity in a religion betwixt the churches of Christ in the kingdoms of Scotland, Ireland and England approved by the 1648 General Assembly of the Church of Scotland to be directory for catechising such as the weaker capacity from the proofs of the scriptures. That's a mouthful, isn't it? I'm glad we don't talk like that anymore. But I will read the first couple of points from the catechism because it is um, a little bit of where we're going with this brief sermon. For those who don't know what a catechism is, it's a thing that you study when you want to join a church. And as a Methodist, um, what we do is we study the sermons of, um, of Wesley as a point. For a Presbyterian, they study this uh, book called the Westminster Confession, and these are the first few questions. It says, what is the chief ends of man? And it says here, man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. The second question, what rule hath God given to direct us to glorify and enjoy him? And the answer is, the word of God, which is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament, is the word of God that we use to glorify and enjoy him. The third question, what do the scriptures teach? The scriptures teach that we are to believe in God and follow him his direction. And then this is the fourth question. What is God? What is God? That's an interesting one. I think we've been writing thousands and thousands of words about that since, who knows? <laughs> and this is what they thought in 1646. God is a spirit. God is infinite, eternal, unchanging in his being, wisdom, power, holiness, justice, goodness, and truth. So what I'd like to just talk about for a moment is that if this book in 1649 said that God is a spirit, and Jesus said to the apostles, I'm going to send you the spirit, isn't it a good thing that we should encourage the Holy Spirit in our churches? Isn't it a good thing? 
Because when we encourage the Holy Spirit, we're actually bringing God into our presence. We're bringing God into our hearts. We're bringing God into this building. And we're bringing God into the community we serve. So the Holy Spirit is a pretty good thing to get on board. So I go back to my question. Can these bones live? This was actually the first reading I remember after I became a Christian as a 15-year-old. I went back to church and this was what the minister preached on. And I looked around and this was a congregation that was getting quite old. I was 15 and most of the congregation I think were in their 80s at the time. And yet, inside they said, we feel like we're your age. Our bodies might be getting old, but our enthusiasm is still there. Our desire to grow the church is still there. We may not quite have the energy we once had, but we still have the love of the church and the love that is God. So I think if we think about the four things that we need in our church, the first one is to welcome the Spirit into our hearts, to be open to the Spirit, to be open to God's love, and to accept that God loves us. Because how can we love others if we don't respect and love ourselves? And I think for our young people, for our teenagers, this is a really, really important thing at the moment, is developing self-respect. It's so important to be able to say it's okay who I am and what I do. It's okay. Because God's love is huge and God's love accepts every single person. Every single person is welcome to God's love. So, welcome God's love into your heart. Have self-respect. Know that it's okay. The second thing is to connect. Because once we have this spirit within us, once we know that we are loved, we have the power to love our fellow human being. We also have the power to love all God's creation. I can never underestimate the power of pets in our lives. We have two beautiful cats that have often brought calm to chaos. And the role of animals is critically important in our life. In my time in the, in the military, we had a lot of soldiers who were suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome. And animals are a very important part of their treatment therapy dogs in particular. Well, guess what? They were created by God too. And we are partners with our pets in knowing God's love. So as we welcome God's love into our hearts, let's seek ways to connect to each other. Spend a moment thinking about that conversation you have with the person in the street. Can you be more open? Can you be more welcoming? Can you be more friendly? Last thing I wanted to mention is about create. What does that mean? Well, when we're connecting, two minds are better than one. Three minds are better than two. If you create an environment where love is nurtured, where the doors are open like they are here, wide open, you allow more people to come in. When you have more people coming in, you have more ideas. And with more ideas comes the creativity of the spirit. Because the spirit is not a concrete thing. You listen to the language of the Westminster Confession of Faith, it's chaotic. It was written for people in 1649. We don't speak like that anymore. 
It was a document written for then. But the Spirit is not a concrete document. It's a document that continually moves and lives within our hearts, that lives within our community, our church. It is a constantly moving thing, the love of God. And so I invite you to be open to the Spirit and be open to the ever-moving flow, as you can see here with the kids. Why don't you hold your streamers up and show us? That's not a box. It's not something square. It's something that is enjoying the space. And that's how it has to be for our community. To enjoy God, enjoy the space, enjoy this beautiful place, and enjoy the beautiful community we, we are within. Because I believe, and I know, and I've seen it in the time that I've been involved in churches, that when you welcome the Spirit, when you connect, when you nurture, you grow. So may we all grow together in our shared mission for Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus, risen, eternal Spirit. Amen.